Welcome to the next episode of The Doc Is In. I'm Derek Keddington. I'll be your host for today's episode. Uh, given the month of October, um, we're excited to have one of our esteemed breast radiologists with us, um, Dr. Nawaz, to talk about breast cancer screening. Sure. Thank you, Derek, for inviting me. Um, so my name is Dr. Nagmai Ram Nawaz. I am a breast radiologist at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Uh, I work with a team of breast radiologists. Uh, there's three of us. Uh, with also complemented with ultrasonographers, mammotechs, nurses, uh, so it's a big team. Awesome. And one of the things that um, I think is pretty neat about your team um, is that it's an all-female team, is that right? Yes, c correct. So we have an all-female area, uh, which is our breast imaging suite, uh, and it's, it's all-female staff in there. So uh, that gives uh, a nice, comfortable private space for the patient to feel uh, relaxed and comfortable. Awesome. Um, so before we, as we kind of dive in here, um, can you explain, you know, what is breast cancer screening and, and why is it important to detect these um, cancers early? Right. So breast cancer, as we know by now, um, is the most common cancer uh, in the world. And uh, it's starting at earlier and earlier ages. So the idea is to start screening and trying to detect this cancer as small as possible so even before it becomes palpable. So most cancers become palpable when they become about two centimeters in size. So our goal is to screen the patient even before they can feel it and find it. Of course, that affects the outcome. So the idea is that the treatment plan will be different, uh, surgery required or not, which chemo will be offered. So all that combination will change if we find the cancer smaller in size. Yeah, that, makes, that makes a lot of sense. Um, so at what age should women start to um, get, get screening for breast cancer? So the guidelines, uh, which are DOH guidelines, Department of Health guidelines, or the uh, U.S. guidelines, which we uh, follow at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi, which are the, the main campus uh, Cleveland Clinic guidelines, is that we start scre screening from the age of 40. So if you are at normal risk patient, then you start screening mammography at the age of 40. Um, how frequent is not next question. I, uh, so, you know, the frequency from the age of 40 to 55, we recommend that it should be done every year. And after the age of 55, we will drop it to every two years. So is there any um, frequency that that would be increased or any reasons that the frequency would be increased in terms of screening? So the, uh, the, the time when we will increase the screening is uh, if a, a patient reaches the age of 55. But on the mammogram, she still has a lot of glandular tissue. So we would like to bring her back uh, after another year. So the idea is to only drop it to every two years once the breast be becomes more fat replaced, which is a normal aging process. Uh, and then it becomes easier to look through the breast tissue. So hence, we drop it to two years. Yeah, great. Um, does any screening guidelines change related to like family history or genetics? Or? Yes, yes, definitely. And uh, um, as you know, we, we have a high risk cl uh, clinic running in the breast health clinic unit in uh, oncology. So we have experts, we, we have uh, people who are expertise in high risk management of patients. We have a genetic counselor on site. So uh, if we refer a patient to this high-risk clinic, and they do their calculations by taking history, by doing genetics, and if they deem that this patient is at a higher risk of breast cancer than the normal po population, then they would put them in a high-risk program. And the high-risk program is that we do a mammogram and an MRI breast, and normally they're done six months apart. Uh, so why do we do that? Frequency, six months apart. The idea is that because they're at a high risk, we would like to catch a cancer in between those six months, right? So hence, we don't wait for one year. We do them alternatively. Uh, idea is to find a small little thing if, we, if it does uh, occur at a much smaller stage. Well, that's awesome to know. Um, one of the things you talked about was MR screening and mammography. Um, so what are the methods for breast cancer screening and kind of how do they work and differ? Right. So screening mammography or any mammogram um, 
conventionally was done as 2D pictures, which is like um, if you want to imagine that you have a stack of papers and you're taking a photo from the top. So which used to make it uh, a little difficult to see through the layers that, you know, what is where. So all the overlapping tissue is like layers and layers of paper. With the new technology, which is tomosynthesis, which is wh what do we do? We take an X-ray and we take multiple pictures at different angles. And in the end, we get like a 3D picture of the breast. So when we get the 3D picture, we literally can see through layer and layer and layer. So we open up the breast tissue uh, and we can find more smaller things more easily, most, more accurately. Uh, so that's what we are offering um, uh, at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. All our mammograms are done with tomosynthesis. The um, going to MR part of screening, um, MR normally takes a very long time. Um, an MR breast, for example, gets booked for, for a slot of 40 minutes or 45 minutes. Uh, which is uncomfortable if the patient is coming to you every year. So we we have come up uh, internationally with uh, different sequences, different tailor-made examinations, where we have reduced the time of the screening MR. So our goal, uh, the current uh, MR we offer uh, at Clean Clinic Abu Dhabi is called a fast MRI scan. And the goal is that it will be done within 12 minutes. Uh, so it becomes very comfortable for the patient. And you're no, more likely for the patient to come back to you. Yeah, 12 minutes versus 45 minutes is, yeah. a, is a huge difference. Yeah. Um, is there any change in accuracy when you shorten the MR scan? So we are picking out the sequences, which are the most important ones to diagnose a cancer. So we would utilize those. And the idea is that all the studies have proven that the sensitivity and specificity is quite high. It's 95 to 98%. So we, we expect to pick up any little thing which we would find. And if we do find something, then we would investigate it more. But if, if nothing is showing up, then we are uh, comforted with this knowledge and we know that this is a normal uh, scan and we would just get her back after one year to rescan. So you've talked about the so the mammogram sorry the MR scans are done for patients at higher risk. Yes. Um, so for the patients that are normal risk, which is the majority of the population, um, we'll do mammography. Yes. Um, so can you kind of walk through like what is a mammogram? How does it work? What does the patient experience as they're going in for their mammogram? Right. Uh, so mammograms are just taking X-ray pictures of the breast. But because uh, it's a very superficial uh, structure, part of the body, uh, you need a very low dose of X-ray and very special kinds of X-ray, which are very, very low dose in radiation. Okay. So that's a common question which we get asked about that, you know, I'm going to get exposed to radiation every year. What is my risk? So again, many studies have been done on this already, and your risk of you know um, radiation-induced cancer is negligible if you do every air mammogram for the next 20 years. So there are many studies which have already proven that. So what we do is uh, basically a patient goes for a mammogram. We have specialized machines for the mammogram and they take pictures of the breast in two different kind of projections, which is like top to bottom view and side to side view. If you have experienced mammographers, uh, which are technologists who are doing the examination um, and the machines uh, are state of the art now, very comfortable. So they can do this without causing much discomfort to the patient. Um, it's done very quickly. Um, you know, the patient is in and out in five to six minutes. They can they can get the procedure done. Um, the changing part and checking in part is a different part, but you know, do, doing the exam. So uh, it's it's a comfortable uh, experience. Um, uh, some patients would experience a little more discomfort than others, but overall, if you have experienced technologists, they can make the experience very comfortable for you. Oh, that's great. And I know our team here at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi is amazing. Amazing team. Some of the best technologists and technology yes. um, available at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Um, so for women, they may be anxious um, to come in. Maybe it's their first mammogram or they've heard, you know, what you mentioned earlier, the discomfort that comes with the mammogram. Um, what advice do you have for, the, for those patients? It's a necessary thing for a female to go through. Um, uh, the risk versus benefit is 
is very high, disproportionate. So the benefits are really high. It's a little bit of discomfort. Uh, come, please let us help you uh, experience it. Um, we would try to make it as comfortable as possible for you, uh, but it's, it's something which needs to be done. I know that if patients have questions, um, our team, you and our other breast radiologists are more than happy to answer questions and kind of alleviate some of those concerns that, that patients bring up. Um, so what, you know, we always hear some misconceptions and some myths about um, mammography and breast cancer screening. Um, what are some of those myths and kind of how can you dispel them for our, our listeners today? So w um, w as I said before, you know, one of the commonest question is that radiation dose, that we, we don't want to be exposed to radiation. And uh, many studies have shown the radiation dose is very low. So for example, uh, a mammogram radiation dose is equal to taking a transatlantic flight one way. Uh, so that's the amount of background radiation one gets exposed to on a flight, and we don't even think twice before taking a flight. But So that's a myth that, you know, it's a lot of radiation. It's very minimal radiation, um, and uh, mammograms in particular have um, very low radiation. So that's one of the myths. The other is the discomfort. Um, many patients do come, and then once they get the mammogram, later on, you know, they will say, oh, I thought it's going to be way more painful than that. Uh, so if you have the right people doing the exam for you, the right machines being used, then the, the experience is going to be not too bad. Yeah, that's great. Um, I know there's been some innovation lately um, related to mammography and cancer detection. Can you touch base a little bit on, on some of that innovation? Uh, definitely. So the, the most hot topic these days everybody's talking about is artificial intelligence and its use in medicine. So radiology, again, one of the first uh, specialities where AI started working. And actually, breast radiology is where it was the first to start with. So the most basic forms, the subtype of AI, used to be called computer-aided detection, which came into action in the late 90s, 1998, when it was oh, FDA wow. approved. So all mammography units were offering the computer-aided detection. It was very basic, and it would help, but it, it didn't prove to be a, a big help. Then the leap started coming in 2000s, uh, and by 2010, the uh, artificial intelligence, you know, had really grown. Uh, so they started coming up with products which can be used in mammography. Uh, the reason is because mammography is done um, in huge population-based um, cases. So your data set is already there. So it was very easy for them to use that data, apply it, and come up with a product which would work on that data set. So AI is the, the thing to talk about. So, um, so you have AI, which if you want to think about it, you know, what is AI? AI is like having a super assistant uh, who's very efficient and uh, is doing the groundwork for you. So what does AI do? It looks at the image. It finds the areas which are higher areas uh, of concern. And it highlights for the radiologist that, you know, look at this area. So it makes it efficient for us to go through images. So when this applies to mammography, again, the same thing, it will highlight the area and it will say, do look at that. And then we focus more on that area to make sure there is nothing. So now if you combine tom tomosynthesis, which is doing a 3D image, multiple layers, which we will produce hundreds of pictures of the breast, and you use the AI on top of that, which is going through every layer for you, and it's telling you that, you know, do pay attention on layer 10 or layer 20. So it makes us more efficient and more accurate. We will go and pay more attention there, and it will make the system more efficient as well. Hence, in the end, better patient care. Oh, that sounds awesome. And that's something that we've been using at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi for a while, yes, correct? Yes, yes. So we uh, at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi uh, are the pioneers who brought in AI for tomosynthesis. Uh, it was not available and to my knowledge still is not being used anywhere in UAE. So we are the only place. That's fantastic. Um, those are all the prepared questions we had, but I know that you always like to 
to tell our patients how important their health is um, as women. So I don't know if you want to end with a little uh, your your little words to them, advice on taking care of themselves. Yes. So I, I mean, uh, I'm always advocating uh, that women have to put their health first. Um, historically, across the world, women being mothers, sisters, daughters are always taking care of the rest of the family and our health tends to take the back seat. So this month, October month, is the month where we should focus and focus on us. So think about your mothers, think about your sisters, think about your daughters, whoever is in the age group of 40 and above. Encourage yourself, encourage your sister, mother, whoever you have in the family. Um, encourage them, go get yourself checked. Get a screening mammogram done because it's very important for you to take care of yourself first then only you can take care of the rest of the family. No, it's great wisdom, great advice. I mean, I know that I need to be better at encouraging my family members yes. um, near and far to go and get their mammogram and have that important conversation about the importance to take care of themselves um, and to, really to be able to take care of each other. Um, and that's what it's about. Um, so if you need a screening mammogram um, and you want to take advantage of the month of October to get that screening mammogram, um, come to Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi um, and we can help you out um, with getting that screening mammogram. We'll have a lot of things happening um, across the month, and so please please come in and, and get your screening mammogram at, at Cleveland Clinic Abu Dhabi. Um, but that's it for this episode of The Doc Is In. Um, join us next time for another great episode. Mm -hmm.